in. I'm Tammy Grimes. In the spring of 1945, the most catastrophic war in history was nearing its close. The wanton murder, the pitiless devastation, the unbearable agonies would soon be over. For a little while, at any rate. But if in the midst of life we are in death, it may also be said that in the midst of death, there is life. And life had a tenacious habit of going on. Even while surrounded by terror and destruction, men and women will continue to cling together and take the eternal vows. Throughout the world, on the 29th day of April 1945, there must have been thousands of weddings. And this is the story of one of them. You... You're in love with him? Yes. He's 40. And you're 17. I always liked mature men. But he's a monster. All the facts are against you. What are facts? They can be figments of anyone's fevered imagination. But truth, dear sister, truth can only be felt in the blood. You're crazy. As crazy as he is. Oh, why do people tell all those terrible lies about him? He's so sweet, so kind... So tender with me. Oh, Ilsa, I love him so much. I would die for him. Our mystery drama, Adolf and Eva, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Roberta Maxwell and Louis Turen. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Weekdays on CBS Television. Wake up to comedy with One Day at a Time. You really think you're hot stuff, don't you, Simon? Ladies in this building, don't call me super for nothing. Then, keep laughing as Mel lays down the law on Alice. There is only one rule in a restaurant business, Vera. Get them to swallow it. And <laughs> the Price is Right with the priceless Bob Barker. That's One Day at a Time. Alice and the Price is Right. Weekdays on CBS Television. Check your local listings for the time. Right now, at your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth Dealers, it's Chrysler Plymouth Value Showdown Days. Right here in our showrooms, you can compare our cars with the competition, feature by feature. Compare styling, comfort, quality, size, and room. Yes, your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth Dealers want you to compare. So from now till August 13th, you can make your own comparisons conveniently at your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth Dealers. He'll have at least two competitive cars and two of his own for you to judge. You might compare a front-wheel drive Plymouth Horizon to a Ford Escort, an elegant Chrysler LeBaron to an old Sierra, a luxurious New Yorker to a Cadillac DeVille. And wait till you compare Ford or GM's protection plan with Chrysler's three-way, five-year, 50,000-mile plan. Your greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer has all the details. So come in today during Value Showdown Days for eye-opening product comparisons and good deals at your greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer's Value Showdown Days. In the end, it all came down to this. A bedroom in an underground bunker. Two Walter automatic pistols, one a 7.65 caliber, the other a smaller 6.3 and a half. There were also the two vials of deadly potassium cyanide. And this was the only freedom of choice that remained to him. Should it be the poison or the bullet? I have made up my mind. Yes? I have definitely made up my mind. And which is it to be? I... I don't know... I haven't decided. No, he hasn't decided. And that's why I'm here. To help him purge himself of all the pathetic illusions and all the false hopes. And to accept the only reality that now exists for him. And for me. My name is Eva Braun. 
I have come here to this underground sanctuary beneath the Reich Chancellery in besieged Berlin. I came because he sent for me. I drove down from the Berghof in Berchtesgaden on roads that were shelled by Russian artillery and strafed by British bombers. But when he calls, I come. And when I arrived a few days ago, I was greeted by his very close friend and deputy, Martin Bormann. Good morning, Fräulein Braun. Good morning. Uh, where is the Fuhrer? Resting. Excuse me. Wait. For what? You and I should talk. Why? I've known you for a long time, Eva. And? Since you first met him. Sixteen years. Back to 1929. I've watched you develop from an empty-headed schoolgirl into a woman of... stature. Get to the point. The war is lost. If he heard you say that, you'd be shot. Eva... You must convince him to commit suicide. The Fuhrer and I have already talked about suicide. He will perform that act at the proper time. The proper time has arrived. He's afraid. That's a lie. What is he waiting for? Do you know what the Russians will do to him? Lock him in a cage and display him in the Moscow Zoo. And the Americans? They'll put him on trial, find him guilty, and hang him. Martin, we still have soldiers in the field... The best scientists in the world. Perhaps they can... That's what he keeps saying. There just isn't any point to it. Perhaps we can escape alive and, and live and... Where? Where in this world? Besides, he has to die. Why? For the cause. He's done enough for the cause. To millions all over the world, he's a god, a god who walked the earth. What happens to guards who walk the earth? They must endure martyrdom. You must convince him. What can I say to him? He already knows all this. You are the only one he trusts. Give him the courage, Eva. There's almost no time left. And so we sit in the bunker beneath the chancellery. We have the poison vials and the pistols on the table. And we talk about it. That's all it is at this point. Just talk. Sometimes he thinks I'm no longer in the room. Even while he's staring at me. Eva. Yes. Where are you? I'm here. I don't believe it. Hold my hand. Now. Now do you believe it? Oh, my my he seldom calls me Eva. From the very beginning, there were the pet names. Charparel, Parcherel, Parcherel, Patty Cake, Sweet Thing, Little One. They all sound so sentimental, so... Viennese. And he would also call me Veverell or Effie, all of which are variations of Eva. But I never had a nickname for him. To me, he was always the Fuhrer. But he always liked it best when I called him Chief. Effie. Yes, Chief. Why is there no sign of General Wenk? General Wenk. Commander of Army Group Vistula, which is gallantly fighting its way up from the south. Chief, stand beside the ventilator. Listen. You will hear the sound of artillery... I'll open the louvre. Yes. Yes, that's General Rank. With 50,000 men and 300 tanks. He has broken through. We are saved. Those are not the guns of General Wenk. General Wenk, chief, has disappeared. Where? No one knows. He must be found. They're looking. And where is Field Marshal Scherner? There is no longer any communication. He's a traitor. I'll have him shot. I don't need him. I have other armies. No, Chief. Don't say no. I have an army in France. No. In Italy. In North Africa. No. The only army that is coming is the Russian army. And it's only a few streets away. What the traitors are spreading these lies. Every... I had three million men. All that is left... A few thousand Volkstrom... A handful of oysters and youngsters. No. Yes. 
And that's why we must move quickly to do the thing that must be done. Here, on the table, the pistols, the vials. Let us help each other. I'm sick. I've been betrayed. Betrayal is the virus. The cancer that destroys me. If only I were well, I would pick up a rifle and go out into the streets. That's where it all began, in the streets, and that's where it should end. Come. No. I'll die fighting. And what if you don't die? At any moment. Uh, yes, a Russian patrol. They know we are here. Because we've been betrayed. And that's... that's why we must... We will. We will. But not now. When? Soon. Soon. He keeps putting it off. But for how much longer? Perhaps he is afraid to die. But he is even more afraid to live. I see now that he wants me to do it for him. That's why I was sent for. And why I'm here. None of the others. Not Borman, not Goebbels. None of the SS. None of them wants to be the one to do it. All of them are afraid of him. But I was never afraid of him. Never. Not even at the very beginning. How old was I? Seventeen and fresh from the convent school. I remember the look on my sister's face when I came home. I was so excited. I had found a job. My very first job. Where did you say this job was? In Heinrich Hoffman's studio. Oh, did you hear that, Papa? Our little Eva is posing for an artist. She's not an artist. Oh, then what kind of studio is it? It's a photography studio. Is that the Heinrich Hoffman on the Schellingstrasse? And what if it is? That's where all those Nazis hang out. Who are the Nazis? Cooks. They wear those, those swastika armbands. Is that so? Well, I met some and they seemed all right to me. Oh, who you'll meet them all at Heinrich Hoffman's. I hear he's the official photographer for the Nazi party. Even Hitler has his picture taken there. Who? Hitler? Adolf Hitler? Oh, I met him. Today. He came into the shop. Hoffman introduced us. He's unbelievably handsome. And his eyes. He looks at you and you just get lost in those eyes. I don't like the idea of your working there, Eva. And why not? He has a reputation, that Herr Hoffman. What sort of reputation? Uh, he hires young, pretty, unspoiled girls like you. Do you realize this is the first time you ever said I was pretty? They say Hitler likes innocent girls. Really? And so Herr Hoffman always makes sure he has one on hand. You are the latest. Herr Hoffman is a great photographer. I intend to learn the picture business. Well, make sure you don't become involved in other business. As the time went on, Herr Hitler came more and more frequently into Herr Hoffman's studio. He was always so polite and pleasant and gallant. Ah, good afternoon, lovely Fräulein Born. Good afternoon, Herr Hitler. I'm afraid Herr Hoffman is out. How wonderful. I was afraid he would be in. Oh? I haven't come here to see Herr Hoffman. No? I have come to see you. Oh, where did you learn to blush like that? <laughs> I believe it comes naturally. What may I do for you, Herr Hitler? Rescue me. Please. From what? Starvation. You're hungry. Famished. But I have a rule. I must never eat alone. Do me the great honor and dine with me. You are asking me to... to have dinner with you? What would you like to eat? Oh, a uh, sauerbraten. I happen to be a vegetarian myself. But I know a splendid place where... <gasps> Did I say sauerbraten? What could have gotten into me? I used to like sauerbraten. But I, I recently decided to change my entire... Trust me. Trust me to attend to the menu. And do you like the cinema? I adore the cinema. Shall we go to one afterwards? Oh, of, of course. What sort of films do you prefer? Huh? Just about any. American films? I adore American films. Excuse me. Maurice, Junger, Linger, come here. 
Fräulein Brown, may I present my friend and chauffeur, Herr Maurice, and Herr Linger, and Herr Junger, my, what shall we say, our chaperones? How do you do, gentlemen? Maurice, Fräulein Brown would like to see an American film. Do you know where one is showing? Uh, yes, one film. And what is it called? I, I believe The Jazz Singer. Does that meet with your approval, do you, oh. Fräulein? Yes, yes, fine. Then, let us go forward. Did Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun see a film on their very first date? They could have. Did they actually see Al Jolson in The Jazz Singer? Well, no one has seen fit to preserve the ticket stubs. But here's what we do know. There is a photograph of Eva Braun in blackface. She is dressed in a tuxedo. And she is doing an Al Jolson imitation. We do know that she performed it several times at dinners and parties for Hitler's benefit, and he loved it. So why not? It is with threads like these that historians weave the tapestry of history. We shall return to the loom shortly. This cute new hygienist who cleaned my teeth told me in no uncertain terms how badly stained my teeth were from tobacco. Well, I was thinking about asking her out. But after that, I was just too embarrassed. Topol Smoker's Tooth Polish, a special combination of polishing agents and a rich foaming cleaner formulated to help remove ugly yellow tobacco stains. Topol is gentle enough to be used instead of regular toothpaste. Since I've been using Topol, the tobacco stains just don't build up. Topol, fluoride in the red package, mint flavor in the blue. Do you know what melasma is? It's a darkening of the skin in spots, which women may get during childbearing years. I got one on my face while I was pregnant, and it hasn't disappeared, though my daughter's a year old. Try Porcelana Fade Cream. Isn't that for age spots? And freckled spots and brown spots like yours. Rub in Porcelana daily, and watch those brown spots start to fade. In just six weeks for many women. Where can I get it? At cosmetic counters or your favorite supermarket. Porcelana. When results count. Use only as directed. Excuse me. Anderson. Hey, how are you, Tom? Okay. You on a business trip, too? No, vacation. Lucky. Matter of fact, I don't do much business traveling now that we're into telemarketing so heavily. Telemarketing? Using the telephone to sell and service customers. Oh? Now the sales business are costing an average of over 130 bucks. Mm. We're using 800 service to help reduce travel costs. How? Putting a toll-free 800 number in our promotional materials makes it easy for prospects to reach us oh. instead of our going out and trying to find them. No kidding. And now we've got a lot more time for servicing our regular customers. You think I should call Michigan Bell about 800 service? Toll-free, 1-800-482-2900. 1-800-482-2900. Ask about how to save and make money through 800 service. Just one of Michigan Bell's telemarketing ideas. Sounds like telemarketing is a great way to get things done. Today. Final call, thank you. Fritz Braun was a school teacher in the city of Munich. Thanks to an inheritance, he was quite well off. But the true treasure possessed by Herr Braun and his wife consisted of their daughters, three attractive, intelligent and lively young ladies. In the year 1932, Gretel, the youngest, was still at school. Ilse, the eldest, worked in the office of a brilliant doctor. And, of course, she was madly in love with him. And middle daughter, Eva, had already captured the heart of Germany's man of destiny, Adolf Hitler. But long before that, he had captured mine. He had such... Oh, I can only call it... A Viennese way with women. And millions of women were madly in love with him. But he had chosen me. Eva Braun. Me. At first, he was busy with his politics. And I would only see him now and then. Consequently, I spent many evenings at home. I would read, listen to the radio, and argue with my sister, Elsa. But Eva, the man is an absolute scoundrel. How can any decent, rational person defend that? Of course, you're speaking from the viewpoint of Dr. Martin Marx. Dr. Marx is a saint. A Jewish saint? All of the original saints were Jewish? I refuse to argue. How can you argue? You have no facts. 
see, it doesn't bother you that your beloved is the, the leader, the, the Fuhrer of all the scum of the gutter? Ilsa, I cannot understand why people tell all these lies about him. He's the sweetest, the kindest. Oh, he's so tender with me. Don't you read what he writes? He declares he will eliminate people. No, dear. He only talks about eliminating vermin. And how does he define vermin? Everyone who dares to oppose him. I don't care what you say, what anyone says. I only know he's right. Why is he right? Because he says so. Oh, you're a fool. You're the fool. You're the one who's out of step with the German people. Eva, how can you give yourself to... to such a monster? We were bitterly divided, Ilsa and I... But we were still sisters. Actually, it was a charade. Papa knew very well that Adolf Hitler and I were living together, even back then. But he had to maintain the pretense that he was the strict father of a virtuous daughter. What else could he do? He was terrified. And besides, it really wasn't doing him any harm. Actually, it was making him a man of importance. Evie. Yes, Chief. Where were you? Nowhere. You were far away. Oh? I was dreaming. Of what? Our beginning. The beginning. And now we have come to the end. Yes, Chief. I must die first. Do you know why? Because... Because if I do not succeed, you must finish it for me. Do you understand? Yes. I trust no one else. All of them would betray me. Just think you could turn me over to the Russians or the Americans or the British. Still alive. It must never happen. It will never happen. It must be done with the pistol. Effie. It was so long ago. But do you remember when you tried it? I remember. You used the 6.35, the small one. Where did you get it? It was my father's. How did you find the courage to do it? I was foolish. Tell me about it. I've told you so many times. Tell me again. But we have so little time. Tell me, Effie, tell me. I had despaired of his love. I thought I was just another affair. They were all after him. Wealthy American heiresses, British noblewomen, wives of European industrialists. Film star. And who was I? A school teacher's daughter. That night I was alone in the house. I knew well my father kept his automatic. I just wanted to toy with the idea of suicide. I pointed the gun at my heart and. Oh, oh Eva! Oh, Eva, what happened? Oh, you've been shot! It's gone! It's Papa's pistol! Oh, you shot yourself! Oh, am I alive? Of course you're alive. But I aimed at my heart. You missed. I, I called Dr. Mark. No. Call Dr. Platt. I know Marx is a great doctor. I never heard of this. Dr. Dr. Platt is a good friend of Herr Hoffman's. And Hoffman will see that Hitler is told about what I did. He says Dr. Platt is a friend of Hoffman's. That means he's a Nazi. And he must be a quack. No, 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 no. I can only trust Dr. Marx to save your life. No. It would embarrass Hitler. Em- How? It would become known that a Jewish doctor saved his, his girlfriend. You mean you would die sooner than embarrass Hitler? Yes. Yes. Call Dr. Platt. It wasn't much of a wound. I recovered very quickly. But that was the day that I believe he made up his mind about me. I had proved my love, not because I had tried suicide. So many women had killed themselves for him. But because of my discretion, I had called the right doctor. Effie, Effie, you were so brave. You shouldn't have done it. I was afraid of losing you. To whom? 
Which one of all of those women did you think could steal me away from you? It isn't important. Yes, yes, it's very important. Which one? Please, I don't want to talk about it. But I do. Do you understand? I do. Now, tell me, which? <laughs> there were so many. You make me out a blue beard. You mean a dumb one. Which woman? All women frightened me. Why? Because all women were in love with you. And which woman frightened you most? Magda. Magda Goebbels? Yes. She's beautiful. She's hysterical, and I cannot tolerate hysterical women. I'm also hysterical. Oh, no, Patty Kate, not you. Didn't I try to commit suicide because of you? Yes, but in a nice, quiet way. You didn't announce it to the world. You didn't do it on my doorstep. You did it very discreetly. I think the problem is that we... We discussed this thing too much. I agree. Let's not talk about it anymore. Let's just do it. In an almost offhand and unconscious way, like some people casually light a cigarette. People who light cigarettes are also killing themselves. Did you know that? Yes, Chief. Smokers. And, and I'll tell you who are even worse. Meat eaters. Yes, Chief. Do you know why? You've already told me. But it never really sunk in. You still devour living flesh. Hardly living. It's been killed. Do you know how it was killed? Please. Not only is meat physically injurious to the body tissues... It is also morally degrading. I have been compelled to inspect slaughterhouses, the latest, the most scientifically modern establishments constructed to transform innocent animals into carrion. Yes, Chief, I know. But the poor innocent animals, they weren't fooled. They knew they were being pushed forward to their destruction. You, you could see it in their eyes. It was heart-rending. And, and the squeaks, the screams, the blood... And people eat meat. No more, Chief. I promise. You always promise. This time, I mean it. They call me an absolute dictator. What a lie. If I were the monster they make me out to be, I could have forbidden all of these and more to my people on pain of death. But I am too kind. You know that's true. Well, say so. It's true. As God is our judge. No. Don't speak of God. He has deserted me. Oh, no. He hasn't. Do you know why he has deserted me? Because I failed him. Oh, no, Chief. Not you. You see, Effie, only I understood him. Only I know the kind of world he wanted. Why was I the only one who saw it? Isn't, isn't it obvious that the world he wants... Is the world he himself created. A world where the strong must destroy the weak. Wasn't the lion born to devour the lamb? What is the lion, the leopard, the wolf, the eagle? No, of justice, pity, mercy. Chief. These are depraved and decadent illusions. And false prophets use them to pervert God's will in order to unman the human race. That's why I was born. No, I know. He sent me into the world to redeem it. And... I failed him. Don't say that. You love me. You're blind. But I have not been strong enough, ruthless enough. I have been too kind, too tolerant, too weak. Well, what are we waiting for? Why delay the inevitable? Hand me the 6.35. Yes. Yes, Chief, yes. A smaller bullet. A smaller entry. And of course, you know how vain I am. I shall be even more handsome in death. Yes, Chief. No more ado, no more conversation. Join me, Effie. Join me after you make sure that I... Yes, Chief. Now, let me sit down. And you must sit next to me. And... Then, when you're convinced that I am... Then you must... Yes, Chief. You must not be taken alive, either. You know that. Goodbye. Goodbye, little patty cake. Goodbye, Chief. Wait. Why do we say goodbye? 
We are not leaving each other. We are embarking on a great journey together. Is that not so? Oh, yes, yes. But we cannot go this way. Which way? Pick up the telephone. But... At once. <laughs> Tell them I want to see Martin Bormann. But why do we need Martin Bormann? Do as I command. And once again, the thing is being put off. That's how it went in the bunker during those very last days of April in 1945. We have a man whose own hand knew so freely when it came to taking millions of lives. Yet suddenly it becomes paralyzed when it comes to taking his own. But things were ever thus. And the last act of his life and our story are rapidly approaching. What do doctors recommend to avoid constipation? These days, doctors stress the importance of fiber in the diet. Food fiber that helps the system regulate itself naturally. Metamucil is the laxative made from natural fiber. No chemical stimulants. So for occasional constipation, doctors recommend Metamucil more often than any other laxative. Try Metamucil powder or pre-measured packets of Metamucil Instant Mix. Regular or orange flavor. Read label and follow directions. Hotel coupon and discount offers are confusing and limited. That's why the world's largest lodging chain invites you to call Best Western before you call anyone else. Chances are you'll find the Best Western just where you need it most at a price you'll want to pay. No strings attached. This is Gene King for your Better Business Bureau. If your idea of summer fun is camping out, whether you sleep in the luxury of a recreational vehicle or rough it on the ground with only the stars above you, there's one piece of gear that's a must, and that's a good sleeping bag. A well-made, lightweight summer bag is a good first choice for novices and for those who aren't planning to do too much cool-weather camping. But if you're heading for the mountains or planning to take a trip in the spring or fall, a three-season bag will be a better choice. Now, these bags are warmer and more expensive, but they'll keep you comfortable at near freezing temperatures. But when you go out to shop, compare bags carefully. Make sure to check the quality of the zipper to find out if the bag is easy to roll up and store, if it's the right size for comfort, and if it's constructed so that the filler won't come out. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. Who Will Bell the Cat is a familiar old fairy tale. And it had a sort of modern equivalent in a bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery in Berlin in April of 1945. Adolf Hitler had to die. All were agreed. Even the Reichsfuhrer himself. But who would be the one to kill him? Obviously, it would be best for all concerned if he killed himself. And as a matter of fact, he had even promised to do it. But Hitler was not particularly noted for keeping his promises. You sent for me, mein Führer? Yes, Bonham. I want you to make preparations for a feast. What sort of feast? A wedding feast. A wedding? Who is getting married, man, I am. You... You are getting married? Forgive me, Gnetta, this Fräulein Brown. I've just remembered. I haven't asked you yet. You... You are going to marry Eva Brown? If she'll have me. Effie? You are... Asking me to... to marry you? During all the years of the conflict, I didn't think that I could assume the responsibility of founding a family. I have now decided, at the end of my life's journey, to marry the beautiful young girl who, after years of faithful friendship, has chosen to share my fate. Fräulein Baum, 
Will you do me the supreme honor of becoming my wife? Now I could die happy, fulfilled, and victorious. For 16 years I had waited, and I wasn't even sure for what. I was, after all, a kept woman, a mistress. I had no position, no status. I was humiliated, snubbed, and mocked, even by my own sister. Ilsa never stopped her steady drumfire of criticism. In the first place, Eva, he's an old man. He's in the prime of life. For you, he's an old man. There's 23 years difference between you. Please, let me alone. One day he'll get tired of you. He'll cast you aside. And who will want you? What will become of you? I don't care. I love him. Do you love him enough to go to hell for him? Because you will, you know. You are living in sin. And now I am vindicated. I am going to become Frau Hitler. And so we ordered food and champagne. We would have a party. Besides Bormann, there was Joseph Goebbels, General Krebs, General Bergdorf, Axman of the Hitler Youth, and the SS guards, and the women. Constanza Manziarli, the cook, Gerda Christian, one of the secretaries, and, of course, Magda Goebbels. The women were very subdued. They were all madly in love with him, and this was certainly a sad day for them. Magda Goebbels gave me a thin, wintry smile, and in a voice that almost bubbled with acid, said, My darling Essie, I'm... I'm so happy for you. Thank you, Magda. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of my beautiful bride? Martin, she is the luckiest woman in Germany, in the world. And why is there no music and no champagne? Ah, uh, who chose that record? Bormann, you scoundrel. <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was always her favorite. Tea for two. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play it in hopes that he would take the hint. Uh, mein Führer, the time is passing. No, that's wrong. Time stands still. We pass. We should have the ceremony as soon as possible. The Russian patrols. Don't pollute the air with the words of Russian patrols. Who will perform the marriage? Shall we send for a priest? No, no priest. But, Chief, I always wanted... I want to be married by a justice of the peace. Who knows a justice of the peace? Uh, Joseph and I were married by a justice of the peace, Monsieur. I remember. And an excellent sort of fellow he was, too. What was his name? Uh, uh, Wagner. Walter Wagner. An excellent name as well. I want him. Martin, have him brought here. Yeah, but my dear, it isn't easy to find anyone in the city under the present condition. Bring him here. But there is so little time. I am still the Fuhrer. I still command. They found him. And so we had the magistrate, the bride, the groom, the wedding guest. But something was missing. The rings. We wanted to give each other a plain gold ring. But where would we get them? Magda Goebbels spoke up. My darling Eva, here's a take my new set. No, thank you. But I would consider it an honor. No, thank you again. But you cannot get married without the ring. It just isn't being done. I want my own ring. My own ring. Is it too much to ask for? All my life I've looked forward to this day. Is it too much to ask? Warner. Yes, my dear. Get two golden rings. But where can I find... You know where. Yes, my dear. At once. Where would he be able to find? And then, suddenly I knew. Upstairs in the chancellery, there was a private Gestapo treasury. It was filled with money and jewels that had been taken from those who had been sent to the concentration camps. Are ah, you, Adolf Hitler, mein Führer, willing to take Eva Born as your wife? I am. And you, Fräulein Eva Born, 
Are you willing to take Herr Adolf Hitler as your husband? I am. Since both parties have signified their consent, I hereby proclaim this valid and legal marriage. There it was. Finally. My wedding day. Or night. It had taken us two days to get married. The ceremony had begun just before midnight of the 28th. It wasn't completed until a few moments later, in the very first hour of the 29th. There was dancing and champagne. Everyone was chatting and laughing and having a wonderful time. We all seemed to forget the war was raging out of control all around us. The chief and I retired for the night. Our wedding night. And everyone thought we would then end our lives. But when we woke late that morning, we dressed, ate breakfast, and then we sat at the table and looked at the pistols, the poison, and at each other. I have decided, Effie. We must not use the pistol. You are too beautiful. Very well. The vials, then. Yes. They work instantly. It's over before you know it. All over. Unless... Unless? Wait. What is it? I must find out. I want Martin Borman. Oh, man, again. Why? I'll find out. Martin. These vials of poison, the potassium cyanide, where did we get them? Oh. You're positive. Very well. I thought so. Did you know who supplied us with the poison? No. Yes. Does it make any difference? All the difference in the world. Himmler. Well? Don't you see? Himmler. How can we trust him? He's plotting against us. But what does that mean? Suppose they were not poisoned. Only something to put us into a deep sleep, a paralyzing coma. But why would Himmler want to... It's part of the plot. What plot? To deliver us alive to the Allies, to, to the Russians, the Americans, the British. How do we know it's truly poison? How can we find out? Chief, it doesn't seem like... Oh, you're a child, you're a child. You know nothing of the world. How base, treacherous people can be. But what are we going to do? There's a way to find out if it's really and truly deadly cyanide potassium poison. Yes? Blondie. Blondie? My faithful blondie. Uh, she, she just had puppies. I know. Poor little things. But it will be for the best. This will not be a kind world when we are gone either. How can you kill this wonderful animal? Don't you think it tears at my heart? But it's the only way. The only way. Besides, Blondie would not care to live without me. She was a big wolfhound. There were times when I actually thought he loved her more than anything or anyone in the world. Even me. He picked up the telephone. His voice was hoarse with grief. His eyes were filled with tears as he ordered Borman to feed a vial of the poison to Blondie. Borman, the only one he really trusted. After a while, the telephone rang. Yes? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Martin. She's dead. I feel like a murderer. Now that we know, it is really poison, Ken. Yes. Now that we know. Oh, Effie. How dearly we have bought that knowledge. What a terrible price we paid for it. It will be quick, and there will be no pain. It's getting very late, Chief. Late? Yes. Ah, uh, Manjula. Speak to me. Martin. Frau Hitler. What is it? News has come over the radio. Mussolini. He's dead. Oh. What happened? He was murdered. By whom? They say his own people. Mussolini and his mistress, Fräulein Clara Petacci. They were... Uh, the Americans have a good word for it. Lynched. 
that, of course, was his way of telling us to hurry. To remind us of what was in store. It had to be done. I looked at mein Führer. He was sunk in his chair. And suddenly I didn't recognize him anymore. Who was this ravaged-looking elderly man? His hands were shaking. His eyes were glazed. This wasn't the vigorous, forceful figure I had fallen in love with. What had become of him? Where had he gone? Effie. Effie. What was he trying to tell me? Effie. We, you and I, we will triumph. I still have time to become the man God wanted. I can still rule his world as his faithful viceroy. We shall begin all over, Effie, all over again. And then I knew that it had to be done. And that I had to do it. And now, he was staring straight ahead. I reached for the 7.65 automatic. I pointed it at his temple. He didn't even look at me, for which I was grateful. He kept speaking of the glorious future. We shall rise from here, Effie. We shall rise from here and conquer again. He fell back on the couch. I dropped the pistol. I opened one of the vials. I swallowed the poison. I noticed his mother's picture on the table. I picked it up and placed it on his chest. And then I sat down next to him with my head on his shoulder. For 33 years, I was Eva Braun. For almost two days, I was Eva Hitler. I was a maid. I was a wife. And now, I am a widow. And soon, I shall be nothing. And nobody... In a little while, Martin Bormann and his SS guards came into the bedroom. They carried the bodies up to the garden of the Chancery. The Russian guns were booming quite nearby. Shells were beginning to fall in closely. They dug a grave, placed the bodies inside, doused them with kerosene, and set them afire. After a while, the remains were covered over with earth. And that was the end of Mr. and Mrs. Adolf Hitler. Or was it? I shall return shortly. If you'd like to take advantage of the current high interest rates in today's money market, but want your money available when you need it, take a moment now to call this toll-free number, 800-228-5000. Ask the operator to send you information on Dreyfus Liquid Assets. Find out just how much income growth you can get from one of the world's largest money market mutual funds. With Dreyfus Liquid Assets, you have the advantage of making withdrawals by phone or paying larger bills with free redemption checks and continue earning high yields compounded daily till your check clears. You can put money in or take it out anytime with never a sales charge or a penalty. But call now, 800-228-5000 for free information and a prospectus, including management fee, charges, and expenses. 800-228-5000. Study the prospectus carefully before you invest and learn how Dreyfus Liquid Assets can help you get the lion's share from today's high interest rates. 800-228-5000. Toll free. 800-228-5000. Whenever we tell a story of real people and actual events, we are always asked, is it true What you have just heard is what happened. One thing, however, stands out. So many of the movers and shakers of this world were really most unextraordinary as human beings. They were quite shallow, vulgar, cruel, and narrow, and not even sane. It seems that so often throughout history, most of us have been ruled by the worst of us. Why? Why have things always been easier for the wicked? That is the greatest mystery of all. Our cast included Roberta Maxwell, Louis Turenne, Robert Dryden, and Joan Shea. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a 
preview of our next tale. The arrow passed far and wide and beyond sight. You recall? Yes, yes. <laughs> At last, it fell. And where it touched the earth, there broke out a stream which presently became a river. And our great lord said, Whoso bathes in it washes away all taint and speckle of sin and is freed forever from the wheel of endless life. Oh, I've never heard the tale told more beautifully. But where is that river? Where did that arrow fall? If we only knew... Yes, but I must know. I must find it and bathe in it before it is too late. Before I die. Are you saying you intend to search for the river? Oh, yes, with all my heart. This is Tommy Grimes, inviting you to... Surgeon Oil Imports. Bethlehem Steel... Acknowledge the Furies. I have heard the disastrous beating of their wings. So said Mr. Theodore Greiser. Yes, the Furies, those three terrible sisters of ancient Greek mythology, who in the implacable pursuit of their duty, maintained a sense of justice in the world. For while a transgressor might avoid punishment of society, he could not escape the retribution of the gods. Where is the professor? He should be back in time for lunch. But you said that yesterday. I know. And the day before. And every day for a week. I told you. He went to visit this shrine. But why isn't he back? He knew I was coming. Well, you'll have to ask him. How can I ask him? He isn't here. Did you kill him? Kill him? Where did you hide the body? Oh, please, you must believe me. Why don't we see if the police will believe you? Our mystery drama, The Jataka, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What fruit comes in a rainbow of colors, all delicious? Plums! Summer, summer fruit, it wouldn't be summer without her. It's plum picking time at your supermarket. Go from the tree, taste them and see. Sweet and juicy or tart and tangy, California plums are just plum good. Nature's way of smiling, and put on the tree. Fresh plums, sponsored by the growers, California summer fruit. Weekdays on CBS Television. Watch your favorite daytime dramas. Follow the continuing story of people locked in a struggle of passion, right and wrong, coming face to face with themselves and their desires on The Young and the Restless. Then, it's drama you'll never forget as intrigue, triumph, and tragedy take center stage on As the World Turns. Don't miss The Young and the Restless and As the World Turns. Weekdays on CBS Television. Check your local listings for the time. Hey, what's going on here at Chatham? Look at these prices. Incredible. Why did you control yourself, sir? Those are just Chatham's cash dividend specials. You mean extra special, super fantastic Calm specials. down, sir. You see prices like that every week at Chatham. Look at these prices. Nine cents a nickel? I've never seen anything like right. that. Right. You see, for every dollar you spend at Chatham, except on alcohol and tobacco products, you get one cash dividend coupon. Pay 36 coupons on the cash dividend certificate and get one cash dividend special for each filled certificate you turn in. Well, but look at this price. I can't believe it. Right. This. That's why I shop but chat them all the time. But, but, but try but, to control but, yourself. But with one fill certificate, this item is free. Right, it's free? Free. Wow, I don't believe it. It's incredible. Go get some. Uh, 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 Take it from me, Bill Reed. Cashier at our 11 Mile and Main Store. You'll like our savings at Chatham and a whole lot more. This week at Chatham, get a 12 ounce carton of Borden's cottage cheese absolutely free. One filled cash dividend certificate. Chatham Supermarket. They're not the biggest. So they're doing their best to be the very best. Her name is Geraldine McElroy. She is 37 years old. 
And while it is not exactly accurate to say that she's never been kissed, it may be stated that it's been a long time between osculations. No, not because Miss McElroy is unattractive. Actually, she isn't at all bad looking, if you fancy the prim, bookish, serious type. It's just that Miss McElroy's passions have been more or less exclusively devoted to the religious poetry that was written in an ancient Sanskrit language. A tongue she speaks, reads, and writes as fluently as her native English. Well, the year is 1902. She has been a guest lecturer at a seminar that was held at the University of Delhi in India. The session is over, and it is time for tea. Ah, Miss McElroy. We meet at last. Professor Yantling, won't you sit down? Ah, thank you. Tea? Oh, of course. I, um, I read your monograph on the Bowie stop. And what did you think of it? Positively brilliant. Thank you, Professor. So, you're the one who is going to carry on after I'm gone. Oh, Professor, you'll be here for a long, long time. <laughs> no, 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 I won't, my dear. Ah, what does it say in the Jataka? The just are those who seek to escape the endless reincarnations on the wheel of life. Do you believe the Jataka? <laughs> the Jataka. The story of the birth of Buddha. Do you believe in the Jataka, Professor? Now I only seek the blessed state of Nirvana. To be at one with the universe. To accomplish this, I need but find the stream. The stream. The stream of the...